Hi, welcome to Klein Academy. I'm Cheryl Klein, and this is one of our first segments of Shared Wisdom from an Artist Notebook. Today I'm going to tell you about how to set up your palette. But first, I want to tell you that there are many types of palettes, so you could get a little bit confused if you've never done this before. Uh, the art stores, they'll sell these uh, paper palettes. They're disposable palettes, actually. And the nice thing about them is that once you're finished, you can just tear this off and throw it away. They also come in gray as well. Um, the gray ones are nice because it helps you to see the lighter colors better. I personally prefer a wood palette, though, because I like to hold it. And there's different types of wood palettes. The main thing that you want to consider when you buy a wood palette is first that it's big enough to hold the paints that you want to put on it, and secondly, that it's not too heavy. This one is very lightweight, and the way it works is there's a little bit of a groove here for your thumb. If you're right-handed, your thumb will slip in, and the palette is supposed to rest on your wrist bone, not to be held or grab it or anything. That leaves your hands, your fingers free, if in case you want to hold a brush or a palette knife. It makes it a lot easier. So today though, I'm going to show you how to set up a palette using a much larger palette. Okay, so we're going to set the palette up now and you're going to need a couple of tools. You'll need a palette knife. They come in different shapes and sizes. I like the metal ones because they move better than the plastic. They're a little bit more flexible and you'll need some paper towels or a roll of paper towels. When I set up my palette, I always go from light colors to dark colors. And the other thing I do is I separate my colors based on the opacity. So I put the opaque colors first and I put my transparent colors second. Um, one of the ways that we teach at Klein Academy is with a limited palette, a Renaissance style palette, which is just white, yellow ochre, vermilion or cad red light, and black. And with those four colors you can mix an array of different hues and tones. And I'm going to show you a little bit first. So when you first put your paint out, I'm using a paint by a company named RGH and they make paints in these plastic jars which is great because at the end of the day you can just scoop it up and put what you didn't use the clean part of it anyway back into the into the little container and put it away with the tube you can't really put it back so I like these for that reason so when you put out paint it's if you're putting it out for the day don't be too miserly that you, you just put a tiny little bit out and you're going to have to keep refilling it. So I just wipe off the palette before I dip into another color and I'm going to leave enough room because I'm going to be mixing a few colors here. Don't pre-mix your colors with any extra oil. The paints come pretty oily already with enough you know, uh, filler and uh, a medium to extend it without having to put any extra stuff into the paint. So then the last color that I'm going to put out is some black. So we'll put the black over here. And the reason I'm patting it down is because I want to make sure it sticks to the palette and that it's just a nice buttery consistency. And then I'll wipe the palette knife off again and then go to my transparent colors. So you might ask, how do you tell the difference between something that's uh, opaque and something that's more transparent? Well, for instance, this color here, which is alizarin crimson, is very transparent. And the way you can tell is if you take your finger and you pull it, off the palette, you can see how, tr how you can see through it. It's much more transparent than, for instance, look at how opaque that is compared to this. And that's one way that I tell the difference. You can also read the back of the paint label and that'll tell you the difference if it's a more opaque color or if it's more transparent. So our next color is ultramarine blue. 
and this is a great transparent color to use for many different reasons and for glazing and to make some nice rich darks. And then the last color that I like to use is transparent red oxide. This is a really beautiful warm rich brown. So every teacher that you will encounter will have their own favorite colors but this is a really good basic palette. If you get these colors then you're, you're pretty well set. If you'll notice we don't have any green on the palette. That's because we usually mix the green. And there's nothing wrong if you see a green you like to buy it, go ahead and buy it. But to get started and to start learning about color and color mixing, this is the best place to start. So another thing you can do before you start painting your model or the still life is to pre-mix up a couple of hues. So what I'm going to do here is take a little bit of the ochre and I'm going to make up a little bit of my own version of my Naples yellow just so that I have this other color ready to go and I don't have to stop and pre-mix. Now when I pull out a piece of the paint here you notice I'm not taking too much because I don't want to pollute the whole pile. And the other thing I do is I really scrape it up and push it down to make sure that I'm mixing really well so it doesn't marble up like ice cream but that's a nice color there. And then I'm going to mix a couple of versions of my red. So let's take a little bit of the red and a little bit of the white and we're going to make kind of a rosy nice color. See this is a beautiful color. And the other thing I can do too is I can also make sort of a flesh tone from these. So just by taking a little bit of this, and I may want to put a hint of black in this, just a hint, just to gray it out a little bit, and I'll show you in a minute what I mean. Take a little yellow. So if I hold this up to my skin, you can see, even though I've been in the sun a lot, this is a very nice flesh tone. And that's a nice color to have pre-mixed. The next color I like to pre-mix is something that I use for my shadows. And it's black and red. And you can actually leave just the black and red and have a nice rich brown on your palette. So that's a beautiful brown. And then if we do the same thing here with the black, the red, and a little bit of white. That's how we sort of, I call it, activate it to make it a cooler color, which is a perfect shadow color on skin tones. And I'll show you what I mean when I hold it up to my own skin. Like inside my hand, I would want the skin inside a shadow area to be relative to what it was reflecting or what it, you know, the shadow part of it. So you can see you wouldn't want it to go black, you'd want to go a little bit more natural towards whatever the skin tone was. So this is a beautiful color there. And then the last color we're going to mix up is sort of the Renaissance blue, so to, so to speak. And all it is is just white and black because at that time blue was so expensive that a lot of times they didn't have blue in any of the paintings, but when you go to the museum you swear you saw blue. It's because it's so cold, black and white together, that next to something warm, it just naturally looks blue. So what I do is I pre-mix, and I probably make these piles even a little bit more substantial, a little thicker, and then I'm ready to paint. Well, thank you for joining us at Klein Academy in our first of a series of uh, studies on how to set up your palette, shared wisdom from an artist notebook. I hope you'll join us again real soon, and if you'd like more information on classes, and other things that we offer, please visit us at www.clientacademy.com. Thanks a lot and have a great time painting.